Hello fellow Spare Parts Army, I'm your average infantryman Chris Cappy, and I recently got the opportunity to try out the Army's extended ammo backpack. It's part of their whole Iron Man system. Iron Man is of course a much better name for the thing than what it actually looks like, which is an assault pack with a vacuum cleaner hose coming out of it. There is a lot to unpack here. Some of it's very exciting for the infantry and some of it maybe still needs to hit the drawing board. So the way it works is the feed chute hooks into the backpack and the whole design and its purpose is to remove the need for an assistant gunner on the battlefield. AGs traditionally have to deal with carrying some of the ammunition and helping their designated gunner with reloading while on patrol. So this could be used for either the M249 or the M240, potentially freeing up as many as eight separate soldiers per platoon from having to assist the gunners. The system was invented in 2011 and it's actually kind of interesting. Three soldiers from the Iowa Army National Guard were deployed to Afghanistan when they thought of this, and they submitted their idea as an ammo backpack concept to the Army. They were dealing with a problem when they were in Afghanistan where they didn't have enough soldiers in their small team to carry around the necessary ammo. And that's when they thought of Jesse Ventura's ammo backpack in the movie Predator. I hope those soldiers got a nice payout from having to develop this idea and giving it to the army, not just getting an AAM pinned on their chest and a handshake from some representatives in Washington DC. That original ghetto rigged ammo backpack prototype has since been retooled into something more polished by the US Army's NATAC Soldier Research Center. If you want to go digging, you can find a whole bunch of arguments on the internet about whether they stole the idea from a company that was already doing something similar or not at the time, but I'm not going to get into that. Because to me, the real question that I have here is whether putting the whole entire burden of the ammo onto the literal soldiers of one person is the right direction to go in. Personally, I would rather work as a team to spread out that ammo responsibility and weight, but maybe I've got it all wrong. In order to resolve this question, it looks to me like it's time for another edition of our segment called Go or No Go. In this segment, I'll present both sides of the argument as to why you should either love the Iron Man system or why you should want to 86 it into the dumpster. First up, why this system should be considered a go. It carries a full standard loadout between 500 and 650 rounds of belt-fed ammo in the backpack, which completely eliminates the need for reloading while on a dismounted patrol. It allows your assistant gunner to worry about more important tasks like spotting the enemy or focusing on operating the new digital systems that the army has like little drones. Usually a belt fed machine gunner can only load between 50 and 100 rounds coming out of a small pouch. So this would tremendously increase your firepower and it gives you additional suppressing fire capabilities since you can fire for a longer period of time. Volume of fire is the cornerstone of any US forces infantry maneuver tactics. With this backpack, you just increased it by a factor of two. Consolidating all the rounds in the backpack makes it more comfortable to fire from the prone because you don't have giant boxes of ammo jutting out from the front of your kit. The installation is quick with the metal feeder tray easily snapping into place on either the M240 or the M249. You can even customize it so the links extend out from the shoulder. This way, if you have a runaway gun or a problem with the sear, you can quickly tear the links apart and stop the weapon from shooting. It also makes it a little more maneuverable compared to having that feeder chute extend all the way to your weapon. It's already been combat fielded with success by the US Army and Special Forces units around the globe. So what if it looks like a vacuum cleaner hose attached to your weapon and then a jury rigged to your backpack? I don't need to look fashionable on the battlefield, all right? This isn't a catwalk, it's war. The Iron Man system is a big go with the qualifying statement that it should be used for specific cases where the optimal solution of having an assistant gunner isn't available. On the other hand, this Iron Man backpack could actually be a giant no-go because why would I wanna make myself a huge target to every enemy sniper out there who can easily identify me as the machine gunner thanks to this huge backpack and the giant feeder tube that makes me stick out like a sore thumb? What if the links get broken anywhere in the chain? You're completely screwed if you're trying to fix that out on patrol. But that isn't even really the main concern here because this system makes it next to impossible to crossload your ammo based on the needs of the squad. Okay, okay, this is a big no-go because take this for instance, what happens if one machine gunner is completely out of ammo in their backpack and the other one has a completely full backpack of ammo? Good luck trying to crossload that ammo. Good luck trying to get half of that ammo to the other gunner. It would take 20 minutes to unzip the backpack, break the links, put them in the other backpack. Instead, it's much easier to just toss them a self-contained drum of 100 rounds. So you see where my problem with this is. This is a giant no-go. Last but not least, isn't Iron Man supposed to be very maneuverable with the ability to fly all over the place? Because I see the feeder tube on this thing getting caught on everything and being a general pain in the there is one positive here because I'm gonna get a giant VA claim payout after the deployment thanks to this thing absolutely crushing my spine. So those are both sides of the argument and I'll let you decide which one is more persuasive. God, I can picture exactly how the pitch meeting went for this backpack at the Pentagon. 
Sir, I've got the next big defense industry soldier system solution for you right here. Great, just take off that vacuum cleaner that you're wearing and tell me what you're thinking. What? No, this is it. It's the backpack feeder shoot force multiplier lethality increasing modular extender, or you could just call it by its military acronym. It's much easier. The BFCFMLIME. Yes, I like where your head's at, but I think we need to rename it so it isn't so ridiculous. Those Marvel movies are very popular right now, right? Why don't we name it the Iron Man system? This way we can pay our machine gunners the same amount, but make them do twice the amount of work. Somebody give this nut job a promotion and get my VA back injury claim denier stamp. In my eyes though, personally, it looks like a great solution for some limited circumstances. For some context, the Army and the Navy have been working on the Iron Man dream system since at least the 1980s. There's photographic evidence of the Navy SEALs carrying the M60 E3 with what was called the China Lake Pack. China Lake is the Navy SEAL Research and Development Weapons Testing Facility located in California. So this is by no means a new invention, but it is the best iteration of it so far. It really fits into the Army's dream of reducing two roles into one. The main thing that I really thought was great with the development here was that the military issued a rapid equipping force and it focuses on fast-tracking soldiers' ideas straight to solutions. Dave Roy, an operations analyst at NATAC Soldier Research, said, quote, We were able to put everything together very quickly, and we were able to prove that with a combat load, that's 43 pounds with 500 rounds, inclusive of the weight of the kit itself, that still gives the soldier 17 pounds worth of cargo weight to attach to the frame. So what they're saying there is you can still attach your MREs, extra water, you have enough free weight, even after all the ammo's in there, that you can still put some additional things in your backpack. So where you're gonna get into the real cost of this system and why it costs a lot of money is that chute. It's based on the ones that you see on the remote weapon systems, that feeder there. It's a 27 inch long feeder that costs about $1,700 each. So on my Instagram, we get a better sense of what the other average infantrymen out there think about this system. Shot Waffle made a great point and said, quote, good idea on paper, but would be terrible in practice, unfortunately. Malfunctions in the feeder system alone would be a death sentence. Ben L. Chicano wrote, I think they should rename it because Iron Man doesn't sound right. Why not Ammo Man? I like where your head's at, Ben. Ammo Man is the true hero that we need out there, resupplying the whole team, carrying buckets of ammo. Of course, I'm having just a little bit of fun here, pointing out some of the possible problems, but truly, I am glad the military is working out of the box to find solutions for problems like ammo management. It could potentially be interesting to see this system paired with something like the lightweight plastic ammo solutions from True Velocity. But I'm curious to know what you think of this Iron Man backpack system. Let's say you were a gunner. Would you wanna wear this? And remember to check out our store if you're interested in buying some of our merch.